My name is Josh Nathan, and uh, I'm a student in the class of 2010 at Amherst. I'm from Boston originally. My thesis is called Prison Walls and Human Will, Literary and Foucauldian Representations of the Penitentiary. I came at this thesis from a bunch of different directions. I'm an English major, but I have um, a real interest in both political science and in philosophy, those kind of philosophical approaches to, um, to not only prison systems, but also um, to kind of the developments of subjectivity, so the developments of how people kind of become people in certain situations, um, be they kind of social or intellectual situations or whatnot. Um, so I was kind of trying to bring a literary focus to that um, sphere of interest. Um, so what my thesis ended up being about was that I took uh, the writings of a French philosopher named Michel Foucault. Um, he's a 20th century philosopher um, and thinker, um, and one of his most uh, well-known works is a work called Discipline and Punish, where he writes about the prison. And I was interested in looking at whether his discussion of the prison in that work resonates, um, either correctly or incorrectly, in several literary works that I looked at. So I was interested in whether the structure that he suggests as being true about the prison um, is, is true or is, is false, I suppose, in, um, in certain literary works um, over the course of American history, from basically the founding of the United States through to the present day. The one other link to this is that um, I have taken and I'm currently a teaching assistant in an Amherst College class that's taught in a prison just down the road at the Hampshire County Jail. Um, there's a really cool series of courses called the Inside Out Courses um, that were founded in Philadelphia and have been brought up to Amherst by two fabulous professors who teach um, a history and a political science course respectively in the prison. And um, so I participated in one of those courses. I later um, have become a teaching assistant, so all year I've been basically traveling to a prison and working with men um, on the inside, um, working with them on their writing, as well as talking to them about their responses to, to the readings we have. Um, one of the most amazing parts of this course, I think, has, has been interacting with these guys over reading really highly complex texts. Um, Hannah Arendt's Totalitarianism will read in jail, and so this class is composed of Amherst college students who basically come to the jail to learn alongside these prisoners, and we'll have these discussions where a college student will raise his hand and say, oh, this passage in Totalitarianism reminded me of X, Y, and Z. And then um, an inside student will raise his hand and say, oh, this reminds me of being in solitary confinement a few weeks ago. You realize that they're coming at this from a perspective where they really do understand what's going on. Um, at a really deep and, and sometimes troubling level, and, as in that example. So um, my thesis actually begins and ends with an anecdote from being in the jail. And I think being in the jail kind of crystallized my interest in looking at prisoners, my interest in, in finding some way for them to maintain a, a dignified humanity. Um, my, my thesis basically begins with this argument that we go into this prison and we hear the doors shut behind us and we enter this classroom and we have all these men sitting around us on kind of our first day of classes who we um, have heard so many myths about who we've never actually met, of course, but you know, these are prisoners, these are men who are no good, these are people who are morally corrupt. Um, and you soon find that these are, these are really wonderful people. These are people with, um, with kind of the, the same moral standings and moral compasses that we do, and who, for, for whatever reason, be it uh, some sort of structural difficulty or deficit in American governments, a governance or in, um, in, in our society or, or kind of whatever the problem is, have, um, have ended up in jail. Um, and, you know, I, I don't mean to forget the fact that these men have done bad things in their past, but these aren't necessarily bad people, and that's a, that's a really important distinction to draw. And so I, I begin with that distinction. I, I'm basically wondering whether I might find in literature an analog to the experience I had in real life, where I found these people who were so defined by a structure that they were, 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 did not want to be defined by. So that is, they were so dehumanized by a structure um, in spite of their desire to be humans. Um, and I was interested in whether I could find that resonating throughout literature. So I suppose those three, um, those three interests have kind of led me in the direction of beginning to read some Foucault, beginning to read some of this prison literature, and eventually hammer out the topic that I've, I've ultimately come to. So I started with the work that a lot of people have heard of, uh, Bartleby the Scrivener by Herman Melville. And Bartleby is this really fabulous, but kind of very enigmatic and confusing story about um, a young man who goes into um, the office, he's a scrivener, he's a law copyist, he kind of copies legal documents all day, and he gets hired by a Wall Street lawyer to kind of copy documents, and um, the lawyer at one point asks him to do a favor for him, and Bartleby says, I would prefer not to. Um, just kind of this weird civil disobedience sort of uh, rejection, um, and yet not really a comment at all, just this kind of weird statement that nobody can quite make light of. And so the lawyer is kind of baffled and comes back to him a few days later and says, Bartleby, I'd like you to do this other thing for me. And Bartleby says, I would prefer not to. And um, at the end of the story, the lawyer is so bamboozled by Bartleby, so confused by what's going on, that he actually moves his offices to try to get away from Bartleby. And at the very end of the story, Bartleby ends up in prison and dies. This is a very bizarre story. It's um, a story that Melville wrote in, I want to say, 1840s uh, or so. 
Um, and it's difficult to kind of figure out what it means and, and where it's going. And so I attempted to look at the story through the lens of Foucauldian theory and see whether I could develop um, any kind of better understanding of it than countless critics have before me. Um, so that was the first work I looked at. Um, I later looked at a couple more modern works that very few people have heard of. One, um, a novel by a man named Malcolm Braley called On the Yard. Um, this novel's very little known because Braley actually spent most of his life in prison and died about a week after he got out. Um, so um, he was actually writing for a largely prison audience and that brought an interesting, um, interesting particularly perspective to, to what I was looking at. Uh, the final work I looked at was a novel, um, but almost more of an autobiography, um, by a man named John Edgar Wideman, who was previously a professor at the University of Massachusetts just down the street um, and is now at Brown. And he was writing about this disjuncture in his own personal experiences between um, being himself um, a black university professor and having a brother, uh, his Robbie, who uh, is incarcerated in jail for life for murder. Um, so a totally different perspective, but uh, a really interesting way through which to analyze some of these theories of Michel Foucault's. I suppose my thesis would be that in literature we can find rather interesting ways of escaping that totalizing structure, that in particularly the form in which these books that I looked at were written, we can find prisoners who actively respond to the prison, who actively kind of break apart the myth that forms the prison, and who actively find in some way some sort of escape from its totalizing structure, from its confining walls. My thesis defense was great. I, I really enjoyed that and didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I did. Um, I suppose the first thing to say was it was challenging. I was basically surrounded by three to absolutely senior members of the faculty as they assailed this work that I'd done and kind of asked, asked me questions about it and tried to poke holes in it. And I suppose the most rewarding part of that was being able to respond to them and being able to reflect on what they said and realize that I did know what they were talking about, that I could reflect on that in a meaningful way, that I could find that the chairman of the department um, said something I totally disagreed with um, and that my disagreement was totally valid. So um, that was really wonderful, really powerful experience to be able to be surrounded by these people who were previously your professors and suddenly became your peers as they critiqued your academic work um, and ultimately were able to say some really positive things about it. Um, I think that with the challenge of being being uh, critiqued on your work comes a realization that you have, have accomplished something and that, um, that you can really tease out the very specific minutiae of the complexities of your arguments and of, of what you've really accomplished. So that was fabulous. Next year, I'll be um, a core member in Teach for America. I will be uh, teaching in a, I already have a placement actually, so I will be in a charter school in Dorchester, Massachusetts, teaching eighth grade writing. My work on this thesis, which was heavily kind of philosophical and very much entrenched in work in the library, will fade away as I move next year to a job where I'm in a classroom every day teaching um, and need to be involved in much more practical elements of teaching rather than the more kind of philosophical work that I've enjoyed doing this year. Um, at the same time, I'm hanging on to a copy of this thesis wherever I go. I loved what I did. This was um, the, the largest work of analytical thought that I've ever produced. And so it really, for me, is kind of the culmination of four years of work. Um, it also deals with issues that are, I'm really passionate about. And I would say if I have one bit of advice to give to thesis writers, it would be to find something you're passionate about. And when you find that passion, go and write about it. That, that's, that's kind of an indication that you're in a place where you really do want to construct your own kind of arguments, really do want to create your own research, and really do want to develop an argument that's truly your own. Um, that, was, that experience was something I value, as well as the particular uh, argument that I made um, was something I valued. And whether I explore this in kind of future readings, whether it's something that comes up in future conversations, and incidentally it already has in really unexpected places, um, this thesis is kind of a part of me. It's a work of, of what I've done um, and uh, I think profoundly important to, to me as I go on, profoundly important as I reflect on my college career.